Hi Nature Explorers. Welcome to week two. You may have already seen the one story. Well, week two we're talking about animal signs and tracks and those sorts of things and um, there's a lovely story called How the Chipmunk Got His Tiny Feet. Um, so if you haven't seen that video yet, check out Jacob's Creek's um, playlist and check that story out. But you've noticed probably that we kind of are doing two things at the same time. We're talking about our subject, the, the signs of animals and exploring our backyards and that sort of thing. But we're also talking about bringing in wildlife to our yards. So one of the things that you're doing this week is building or making a butterfly puddler, which um, should help to bring butterflies into your yard. But I thought maybe you'd like to hear a story about where butterflies came from, how they came to be. So this story um, is from the Tohono, o Tohono Odom people. And that word, Tohono Odom, means the desert people. That's their name for themselves. And they live um, and were the original inhabitants of um, the southwest, um, especially southern Arizona, and all the way south, across the border into Mexico, down to Sonora, is, is their, um, their lands. And this is a story that they tell, or they have told their children for, for many, 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 many years. And so it seems that a long time ago, when the earth was fairly new, um, the creator, who they call Itoi, which means elder brother, Itoi was walking around and looking at all the things that had been created and seeing children playing and laughing and the trees were beautiful green and the flowers were all blooming and you would think that that would have been something to make him happy. But he was starting to feel very sad and his heart was very heavy. He was looking at the children playing and he thought, hmm, in some years these children are going to grow up and they're going to get old and wrinkly and the hunters, their arms are going to get weak and they won't be able to, to hunt and the flowers, the beautiful petals are all going to fade and fall off and the trees are already starting to turn yellow and their leaves are all going to dry up and just fall off and oh the more he thought about it the sadder he got he just was really feeling pretty pretty unhappy and pretty heavy and as he was thinking a gust of wind blew and it blew some of the yellow leaves so that they fluttered on the on the wind and they went past him and he kind of took note of that and he was still looking around and he saw there was bright sunshine and the skies were blue and the women were grinding cornmeal and the cornmeal was bright white and their hair was so black and he thought there are beautiful colors look at the green of the trees maybe I should preserve these colors I'll save them I'm going to make something that'll save these colors and then the children will have something to look at and enjoy and so he started he went and got his bag and he started walking around and, and gathering little bits and pieces. He grabbed the blue from the sky and the white from the cornmeal and he grabbed a little handful of the gold from the sun and the yellow from the, from the leaves and the beautiful colors of the flowers, the reds and the oranges and the purples and the black from the women's hair um, and just gathered all kinds of beautiful colors and put them in his bag. And as the birds were singing around him, he thought, Hmm. As an afterthought, he just sort of figured, oh, I'll just take the songs of the birds and throw them in the bag too. So he got everything all together and then he went to where the children were playing. And he said, children, come here. I have a gift for you. Come see what I've made for you to, for, to make you happy. And the children all came over and they opened the bag and out th flew thousands and thousands of butterflies in every color you can possibly imagine. And they fluttered all around their heads and they landed on their heads and they flittered around and sipped the nectar from the flowers and the children just thought that was so much fun. And then the butterflies started to sing. 
And they, they really liked that. They smiled and giggled and thought that was terrific. But a bird, a songbird, landed on Itoy's shoulder, elder brother's shoulder, and he said, um, the, the bird said, you know, this isn't fair. Some of you who have been in camp in the past years, you may remember there was a story that I told you about what the birds had to do to get their songs. They had to do a competition, to, and every bird got its very own song. That was that was the whole thing, and it was a quite a quite a deal. And this bird was really kind of upset that they had to work so hard, and every bird was supposed to have its own song. And now Etoy had taken them and given them to the butterflies. And they said. This bird said, isn't it enough that you've already given the butterfly every color of the rainbow and now you've given him our songs too? Is that fair? And Etoy felt kind of bad. He said, no, you're right. I, I gave those songs to you and I should have never taken what didn't belong to me. And so he took the songs from the butterflies. And so that's why butterflies are silent today. But I hope your puddlers work and I hope you'll get to see lots of different colored butterflies um, in your yard and when you do i hope you'll think of the story of itoi and the butterflies and the tohono odom people okay have a good day and see you next time